Hey guys, I'm back. I apologize for the disturbance, but that was this was an important call that my husband had to take, and I'm using his phone for this uh, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, so we're going to start again, uh, so hold tight. But once again, um, I pray that you join me back again, uh, and we talked about um, how God gives us strength. He does give us strength, and, and, and I think the last thing I talked about was remember that no one in this world is perfect. None of us are perfect, and, it, and everyone has their own trials and tribulations. So just keep your faith and trust in God, and that he knows what he's doing. That's the key. We have to understand and, and have people to understand that God knows what he's doing. Uh, we don't know. We're not going to be God. God knows what he's doing. Thank you guys for rejoining me again. I apologize once again for the disturbance. Uh, but I'm back on. And so we're going to try to go ahead and get through this uh, before someone else calls here. <laughs> uh, but God promised a way out. He does promise a way out, uh, as told to us in first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And, and, and in this particular verse, I'm paraphrasing where God is always faithful. He's always faithful in his promises because he will never give us any difficulties beyond what we're able to go through. And he is there to provide a way to face them. He will provide a way. And a lot of people have gone through a lot of difficulty moments. A lot of people have gone through some storms. A lot of big people have gone through some pain, but I promise you some of these people can tell you they can tell you that that if it had not been for god they wouldn't have made it out that means they had to lean and depend on somebody who was that somebody well somebody was the god was god almighty so we will go through some difficult times but once again you will get through this you will get through this uh number two god gives us hope the first one was god gives us strength the second is now god gives us hope uh, and we say God is our hope. Well, that's true. He is our hope. God is our hope. Uh, uh, he is the one who gives us inspiration and, and, and strength to face the challenges in our lives. And he, his love, his love and compassion give us the courage to keep moving forward despite everything. I don't know about you. If I didn't have my relationship with, with my father, God, I would not know how to move forward. So God gives us the love and compassion and the courage to keep us moving forward. So, and because, why? Because he wants us to be happy. He wants us to be joyous. And, and so he gave us this incredible gift called life. Okay? And, and, and to understand why God gives us hope, we must first understand what hope is. Well, hope, hope is not only a feeling of expectation, uh, but also an action. Uh, it means that uh, uh, we're looking forward uh, with uncertainty. We, we're, we're looking forward to uh, expectation uh, about something good is about to happen to us soon. That's why we hope. That's why we have hope. And, and, and God gives us the hope that won't disappoint us. Always, and 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 it, it means that when 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 someone say, uh, "I hope, I have hope," that person expects and expressing faith in God. When they say, "Well, I have hope," you know, you can say what you want to say, but I have hope. Well, what they're doing, they're expressing their faith in God and God's promises for their future. This is what they're this is what they're wanting, and this is what they're they're thanking God for because God gives us hope that won't disappoint. And I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that. And sometimes, now listen, sometimes we, we face uh, an impossible situation. That does come. Uh, but nothing is impossible with God. Listen to me. Nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. He can turn any trouble around for his glory and for our good. Nothing is impossible for him. See, Jesus told us not to worry about tomorrow because we have enough troubles for today. You know, and a lot of times we... We tend to worry about what's going to happen on tomorrow. I'm one of those. I'm an overthinker. Yes, I'm guilty because I do overthink. You know, I, I think, okay, this is what I got to do tomorrow. And then I got to do this this weekend. But God wants us to take care of what's going on today. You know, God uh, don't want us to have to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of this self. Okay, so we've got to take things one day at a time. Now, I'm talking to me because, like I said, I'm the world's worst. I am an overthinker. So, therefore, instead of worrying about what might happen tomorrow, we should trust the Lord who is the giver of hope and the sustainer of life. See, I, I, I can't waste a lot of time worrying about what's going to happen to a day that I hadn't, that I hadn't even got here yet. Okay, so I've got to take care of what's going on right now in front of me. And the Bible teaches us uh, that Jesus has overcome the world. We, we know what uh, that's found in John 16 and 33. And if you know him as your Savior, listen, if you know 
him as your savior, you are an overcomer. If you know him as your savior, you are an overcomer. Our victory does not come from within ourselves, but through the faith we have in Jesus Christ. Okay? All of these things are important. You know, like I said, God does give us the hope. Okay? And no matter how great or small our circumstances may be, there is always hope with God. It's a hope that won't disappoint. Number three, God give us inner peace to understand the difficulties. He gives us inner peace to understand the difficulties. And inner peace is a great gift from God. <laughs> Thank you, God. Uh, and, and that peace also helps us understand the difficult situation and take suitable action. And we all have that time where we can't understand the situation. Now, we, we try to figure out why things are coming at us and, and, and why they're coming at us so hard. And most of the time, when we go through difficult moments, it's a, it's a gut punch. You know, we try to understand. And in that, that, in that time, uh, when we pray to God, uh, he gives us that inner peace. Have you ever witnessed that? I have. Where when we really talk to God about what's going on in us, all of a sudden there's this peace that comes about us. And, and that peace that makes me feel so relaxed. God, I know you hear me because I begin to feel your presence. And that's what that inner peace is when you begin to feel the presence of God. And so he gives us that inner peace uh, to understand the situation and to do the right thing. So in other words, we can say that we can take suitable action when God gives us that inner peace and we'll take the right action at the right time for the right purpose. But sometimes we cannot understand the situation because of our negative thoughts and emotions. Yeah, And our emotion can get the best of us. And our, our emotion can turn a negative thought. You know, so but God has given us the ability to understand our difficult situation. He gives us peace. He gives us peace in the midst of them and the relaxation will help us through them and give us the wisdom to know what to do. We have to trust God. We have to trust God. Let's say what, what does Philippians 4 and 7 says? It says the peace of God, which can transcend all our understandings and can guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah, that, that's what I was talking about earlier. So that means that God's presence can give us peace in difficult times. His presence, you know, I, 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 I wait for his presence. I, I pray for his presence to come into the midst of what I'm going through. Once again, I can't do this all by myself. I can't do life by myself. So I'm going to talk to the one that is the sustainer of life. And the best way to get through difficult times is not to watch others have success or good times, but rather be uh, by being thankful for what God has given you. I don't have time to watch the Joneses. I, 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 I can't watch uh, uh, how successful they are. I applaud them, but I can't. I can't wrap my mind and keep my mind focused on why did they get the big house? Why did they get the big car? Why Why is everything looking good on them and I'm still waiting on God? I can't focus on them. I can praise God for them because I know if my neighbor got it, God is in my neighborhood. That means he's coming my way. So I applaud them. I'll say, okay, thank you, God. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that the Joneses were able to do what they were able to do through you, God. That means you're on my street. So I wait for God. So I pour them. So I can't. I can't watch others. If I'm going through, I can't watch others, and their success and their good times, and then take my mind focuses off like God is not going to come to my door. If He, if He made a way for them, He's going to make a way for me. Okay. So see, He has given each of us, uh, uh, and each of us, uh, and His love to help through the hard times, and and we always remember that God is always with us. God is always with us. And this will change uh, our minds from negative to positive when we know that God is always with us. And he will help us understand how he's able to, to give us the inner peace in that difficult time. Number four, God removes our burdens. Oh my God, he removes our burdens. Thank you, Jesus, because he has removed a lot from me. And if we think about how God helps us in difficult situations, God does remove our burdens. And, and sometimes we may worry. We may worry about overcoming that difficulty, but suddenly it may disappear, disappear because God has made that go away. Have you been there where, where all of a sudden things gotten better and, and you thought you were going to have to go through this uh, this day and then the following day and then the following week and then the following month and all of a sudden it just goes away? That's God. That's God. He, he, he made a way. He made a way. He lifted your burden. You know, that's why, as the song said, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And, and trust me, if you take it to him and 
leave it with him. Don't pick it back up. Leave it with him. Either you trust him to take care of it or you don't. So if I'm going to go to God and say, God, I need you to handle this situation. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it with him. I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to sleep. Because I gave it to the one that I can trust. You know, and I'm I'm just one that you know because he has a remarkable mark, remarkable way of removing things from our lives when the time is right, when his time is right. See, you may want it to be done in five minutes, and God may do it in five days. Okay, but it's when the time is right. But I promise you, the time will be right. I know when I've been there, the time will be right. You may get nervous when something is due on Friday and here's Thursday and you hadn't heard from God. And here come Friday morning and you still hadn't heard from God. But just as soon as it hits 12 o'clock, see, I've been there. I've been there. So you got to trust God in his time because everything falls on his time. And sometimes those things are burning that, that we couldn't carry on our own. And other times there are habits that we have and addictions that we've made and vices that we didn't even know that were there. Because sometimes we, we do things that, that uh, uh, become addiction. And I'm not talking about things like as far as drugs and alcohol. I'm talking about just habit forming things like everyday things. You don't think there's anything wrong with it, but they've become a habit to you. You know, so, so, but God will remove those as well. When you've done things over and over and over and over again, how that saying go, you, you, if you want things to change, you keep doing the same thing over and over again. You think things are going to change, but you keep doing things over and over. Okay. That makes no sense. How you think, how you expect things to change when you're doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, so if some things become habit forming, addiction forming, and, and all the vices that we probably did not realize that we were we was doing. But the Bible does say that God is our refuge and strength. And he is that present everywhere in our time of trouble. The Bible teaches us that. So we do not do not need to fear. So we have to understand how God is placed in our life, how we place him in our life, how we place him in our life. We have to place him in the right. He's got to be the front, center, back, uh, side, top, bottom, everywhere surround us. He's got to be that one. He's got to be that one. And if, you, if you've if you been trying to get rid of something, if you've been trying to get rid of something in your life for a long time, only to find yourself falling and failing again and again, turn to God. See, you're trying to do this on your own. Turn to God. Who will help you succeed where you could not do it. I mean, you need to turn to God. I've been there as well. Thinking I could do these things myself. And I'm just, just like a little rat on a wheel. Over and over again. And, and, and if, you, if you're facing difficulties. If you're facing problems. Don't worry. you got to pray to God. And leave it with him. Like I said before. And he will solve your problems as soon as possible. Once you leave it there. On his time. Okay. Remember, when you pray for something, you don't forget to thank him. Don't forget to thank him. I'm one of those people that believe in God. I, I, I'm praying for you. I'm in this need right now. And at the same time, before I get up, I'm saying, God, I thank you. I thank you in advance of what you're about to do. Because I know you, if you did it for me before, I know and trust you that you're going to do it for me again. So, God, I'm going to thank you. Because I trust you. Number five. God helps us to be calm. God helps us to be calm. And many times in life, we face situations that seem to be beyond our control. We do. We, we do. Uh, and a particular case may be causing us to lose sleep and face anxieties or, over the, uh, the outcome. We've all been there. We've all been there. But God is always with us. There was a situation, without me having to get too deep into it, a situation that happened to someone very, very dear to me not too long ago. And I just, I trust God, you know, I, I, it, it bothered me to see this particular person go through what he was going through. But I, I took it to God and said, God, I know what you're able to do. And once I took it to God, within hours, within hours, I was beginning to see some changes and knowing that God was taking care of that situation. That's, I trust him, y'all. I trust him. I trust him like that. And, and, and maybe you're going through, maybe you're going through a tough time right now. And looking for a way to be calm in difficult times. And, and you can do two things. You can ask God to help you find a way of being calm during your diff, uh, difficult moments. 
or you can keep your faith alive and keep that and know that God will help you find a way of being calm during your difficult moments. Ask God for help. Ask God for help and keep your faith alive. See, see, God looks at that. God looks at that. Well, okay. Hey, dear. <laughs> Husband just walked in. Because um, I'm trying to keep check on him because he's got to leave in a moment because he's got a job to do. He has an assignment. Um, but number six, number six, God comforts us through people. He does. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I appreciate those people that, that reaches out to me and give me something encouraging. Uh, I appreciate that, especially it's almost like they know exactly what I'm going through and they call me at that particular time. Um, it, it's, it's like, that's God. And I recognize that God, you knew exactly who to send. You knew exactly who needed to call me. You knew exactly who needed to say something to me at a particular time. That's God. And I recognize that. So, so, so when you, when, when we go through a difficult situation, sadness may overwhelm us and it does. And, and when we, and we may even think, where's God? Why, why doesn't he bring me out of this pain? And, and we all go through those things and, and then realize that God is helping us through people. So don't be so, don't be so quick. Don't be so quick, uh, to, um, um, to get over and push people away. Robin, I will give you those five things in just a moment. Um, you wanted to know what the five things again. Uh, number five, and I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Number five is God helps us to be calm. That's number five. Number five is God help us to be calm. Number four is God removes our burden. Number three. Let me find number three. Oh, yeah. Number three, I probably didn't get to number three, but um, number three is God give us inner peace to understand the difficulty. God give us inner peace to understand the difficulty. Number two is God gives us hope. And number one is God gives us strength. Okay. And number six, of course, is God comforts us through people. Number seven, God teaches us valuable life lesson. Yes, he does. God teaches us very variable life lessons. He does. He he he. We can go through uh, some things and many hard times and wonder why God would allow such bad things to happen to us. You know, we always say you know b uh, bad things that happen to good people. And Robert, it's, it's eight of them. I hadn't got to number eight yet. This is number seven. Is God teaches us valuable life lesson? Okay. Um, and we we must remember that God works everything for for those uh, for the good for those of us who love Him. He works. That's what Romans teaches us that God works everything uh, for the good for those who love Him. And God uses these hard times, believe it or not, to shape us into better people. I'm a witness. I've gone through some things, and I recognize that God. Uh, uh, mold me and shape me up to do something better. And I kept wondering, okay, God, why am I going through this? Well, I learned later why I was going through this. I learned later because he was building me. He was molding me. He was preparing me for, for great things. A lot of times we don't like to hear those things. We don't like to say, well, why do I have to go through this hell that I'm going through? God is building us. He's building us to be better people. Uh, and the hardest thing to learn is what to do with our lives uh, as they unfold. And, and, and sometimes we don't know what's happening while we're going through what we're going through. And most of the time we find that we, are, we see God teaching us valuable life lessons in our difficult times. We just have to open up our eyes. God doesn't always give us the life we want. He provides us what we need. Okay, so that I means I got to follow his plan because Jeremiah 29, 11 teaches us that God knows. He knows the plan that he has for us. He made the plan, the plan, the plan to prosper us and not to harm us. So I got to, I got to trust him in that. Because if he tells us that he's going to give me a better future, I got to follow his plan. I, I may do something and then I turn around and, and, and go one way and God said, I didn't tell you to go that way. And then I end up falling and stumbling. So I follow God. His plan. His plan. Guys, I'm going to have to stop. I know I have number eight, and number eight is a lot. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to pick up on next week uh, because hubby has to run and, and he needs his phone. Okay, so 
next week there will be a, a little bit of this but i will also have a different uh topic as well but i will pick up on the the remainder of number seven and finish up number eight of uh dealing with our tough times okay god bless you we love you we thank you let's pray gracious father we thank you so much for this day for this hour for this time Thank you so much for these who joined me for a second time. I appreciate them understanding. Now, God, we ask you just to bless each one of us as we go through the remainder of this day. Thank you so much for giving us the peace and the joy that we know that you have given us even through our difficult moments. We love you. We thank you so much for who you are. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. See you guys next Thursday. week. Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry. Thursday. Light hello. Pastor Black is going to talk about lightening your load for Bible study. Thursday at 4 o'clock. Please, please, please. This will also help us too. This will also help us. And do please share. Share. There's two videos on Facebook. So share both of them, if you don't mind, on your personal Facebook page. For those of you that didn't pick up on the first one, it's on there as well. So thank you guys so much. But also tune in with us on uh, for Bible study moment at 4 o'clock with my husband, Dr. Larry Black. Uh, lighten your load. All right, that's going to be a good one. See you guys soon. Thank you.